So uh, thank you everybody who's joined uh, for uh, tonight's meeting about uh, how Hub 101 is developing entrepreneurs and launching startups. Uh, I'm Darren Johnson. I'm the uh, section secretary and newsletter editor. So um, if you get emails from me, if you get emails from the section, they're probably from me. And if you signed up and asked for uh, uh, to be added to our list, you'll start getting them in, in the future. Um, just one or two logistical things here um, regarding WebEx. Um, if you have any questions, you can use the Q&A box. Uh, which you should probably find in the lower right hand corner of your uh, of your screen to um, ask ask questions. If it's something technical regarding WebEx, you can send it to host. If it's something uh, for the speaker, you can send it to all panelists or if you make a mistake, that's fine because we all talk to each other anyway. Um, uh, just a quick update on a couple uh, upcoming talks we've got. Uh, Tuesday of next week, we've got uh, surviving disasters. It's part of our uh, uh, sustainability and uh, controlling wildfire series. Uh, on Wednesday, uh, we've got one on, for the Computer Society on ransomware. And then next week, on the 21st, I believe, uh, we've got one on uh, electric vehicles. So, um, information on how to sign up for those is on our website. Um, and also uh, coming up, not till October 9th, but we're starting planning now is our uh, annual STEM event. Um, we it wasn't we had some challenges in 2020, but we planned for it to be live again in 2021. So uh, we're looking for volunteers for that. So information on how to sign up for that's on our website as well. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jerry Knotts. Jerry is our chair of our. Buena Ventura Life Member Affiliate Group, and uh, that's it. Uh, take it away, Jerry. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, Darren. Uh, I don't know how many of you understand or know anything about LMAG, but uh, like, he, like Darren says, Life Members Affiliate Group, and in order to be a member of LMAG, hey, I see Joseph's in. That's very good. He'll see his slide right there. Anyway, uh, uh, LMAG is made up of members of the IEEE who, by the time you add their years of membership with the IEEE plus their age, has to equal 100. And we have a few. Doug, I see, is in there, and he's a vice he's a vice chair of this at the LMAG, by the way. Uh, just a little bit more, and I, I stole the thunder of Joseph Wee, and if you look at that slide, that was one of his products. Uh, showing the IEEE and its global reach, it's amazing when you see 400,000 members and how many technical societies and countries were involved in, annual conferences, technical documents uh, that they produce, and top-sided period periodicals. Now, as a member, you you have access to all those documents and conferences and societies. And uh, I can't tell you how many, how many groups do we have or societies we have, uh, Darren, you know, uh, in our section? Within our section, uh, it's uh, nine or 10. Okay. Uh, I wanted to make sure that uh, I introduced Joseph. He is the uh, founding chair of the IEEE uh, startup SIG. And, if you unmute your uh, mute your uh, mic, Joseph, and tell us what does SIG stand for. Uh, I don't didn't set Joseph up for that, and uh, well, hopefully it unmutes. But it uh, it stands for Special Interest Group. There you go. And if Joseph's yeah, taking on unmute, he can he can chime in as well. Did you get a chance in there, Joseph? Okay, well, anyway, tonight we're very, very pleased to uh, to host uh, Kristen Bell. And she's the community manager of Hub 101. And that's a marvelous organization. I remember a long time ago, and uh, I'm a member of the, the dean of the uh, School of Management, his uh, advisory board. And uh, we discussed this a long time, and then, of course, Michael <laughs> made it happen. And Kristen is now the leader of that organization, and we're so proud of her. 
And I'm going to turn it over to her and let her blow the whistle on everything. Okay. You Thank got you for it. that Kristen. kind introduction. Hi, everyone. I'm Kristen. And uh, I see it. Thank you. All right. There you go. All set. Hi everyone, um, my name is Kristen Bell. I am the community manager and program manager of Hub 101, and I develop programs for entrepreneurs. I am also an entrepreneurship educator. I teach entrepreneurship at Oaks Christian School here in Thousand Oaks, Westlake Village, and also for Cal Lutheran's executive MBA program in Austria. I also manage portfolio and deal flow for a group of angel investors in Santa Barbara called Santa Barbara Angel Alliance. And I mentor entrepreneurs in early stage and growth stage ventures all around the world, including in UK, Greece, Saudi Arabia, and Austria. And from all of that, I hope that you can gather that I'm really passionate about supporting entrepreneurs and the, the entrepreneurial ecosystem in general, which makes us a really good fit at Hub 101 because that's exactly what we're doing. I wanted to uh, kind of give a brief overview. I know that a lot of you have been to Hub 101, and I look forward to welcoming you back to the space when we do when you do come back to hold your meetings. Cal Lutheran started its Center for Entrepreneurship in 2014 and had a mission to teach its students about entrepreneurship and it understood that there's a really important part of entrepreneurship is learning by doing and exposure by working with startups and entrepreneurs in the community who are actually working on ventures. So they started getting to work. Um, Jerry alluded to it. Uh, Dean Gerhard Apfelthaler started getting to work on opening a physical space. So in 2016, Hub 101 was uh, born. It's a co-working space, an incubator, and a community dedicated to supporting entrepreneurs. It is managed under the now uh, Stephen Dorfman Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. And within this area, it, Hub 101 is still quite unique. A lot of schools have entrepreneurship programs, but there are not a lot of universities that have a physical space for not just students, of all disciplines, but also for community mem members to come together and interact um, with each other. So it was important to the team when they were scouting this, that this was not just for students and that this was an opportunity for the community as well. We do mainly four things that we have uh, come to find. We provide the most value, collaboration through co-working, discovery through educational programs, growth through mentorship, and community building through events. Just do some pictures up here of some of the events that we've had at Hub 101 and that one on the top left might look familiar. That was an IEEE awards um, event that you held at Hub 101. I'll have a couple more pictures of that one uh, coming up. So we have a couple goals or a few goals at Hub 101 for the community specifically. The first is to establish the center as the entrepreneurship hub in the region. We also want to create opportunities for students. This includes internships, projects, launching startups, and then finally contribute to the regional economic development through accelerating um, startup creation. Again, these are some pictures of our space, some of our coworkers. I'm gonna talk a bit about our philosophy and our methodology before kind of diving into the activities that we do because I think this is really important. It underpins everything that we do and how we develop entrepreneurs. Our philosophy is that anyone can be an entrepreneur and anyone can embody an entrepreneurial mindset. An entrepreneurial mindset is someone who thinks innovatively and creatively to overcome challenges, solve problems, or enact change. Someone who embraces critical thinking, curiosity, unhindered questioning, and someone who actively seeks out improvement and challenges the status quo. We believe that entrepreneurship is about more than just startups. I'm gonna talk about this in a little bit more and that anyone can benefit from an entrepreneurial mindset and skill set because an entrepreneurial mindset is someone who is highly resilient, resourceful, solution oriented, even when resource constrained and under conditions of adversity or uncertainty. I want to give a little bit of time to our methodology. Um, again, it is critical to what we do with entrepreneurs and it kind of sets the stage for the activities that I'm going to dive into in a bit and how we work with entrepreneurs. Learning entrepreneurship as a process this is kind of like the first tenet of what we do. Learning entrepreneurship doesn't guarantee long term success, but it does provide a framework to increase the odds and magnitude of success for a new venture. Entrepreneurship should be top. This is um, 
these are guidelines by MIT, MIT's Entrepreneurship Center. The first is that it should be open, a common language and tool. So the idea here is that collective wisdom of the group is always greater than that of any one individual. Similarly, entrepreneurial knowledge doesn't just come from one individual or one institution or even one country. And so we've created a toolbox of resources that we integrate into our approach, into our educational approach that we're constantly revisiting and refining. So we have a call it a common knowledge base. Then a systems approach. Entrepreneurship is very complicated. It's multifaceted and it requires a systematic approach and not just a linear mindset. So constantly looking for the connections and relationships between the system. And then the final part is rigorous, but practical learning by doing. So we teach entrepreneurs the principles and the knowledge that will optimize their chances of success. And then we apply those learnings to their startup ideas. And this learn by doing allows them to really bring an idea to life and translate their knowledge into a capability. The second tenant, second of three, is uh, learning as a business model search. And I kind of didn't really uh, talk about Bill Aulette here. If any of you are familiar with Bill Aulette, um, he's one of the entrepreneurship academics. Um, this is his 24 steps to successful startups, and we use this in some of our, uh, our framework. We also use the works of these gentlemen here on screen, Eric Ries, Steve Blank, Alex Osterwalder, and Yves Pinier. I'm sure those names may sound familiar to a lot of you. So the second tenet is learning entrepreneurship as a business model search. No business plan survives first contact with a customer. So rather than spending hours and hours working on a business plan, get out of the building and go talk to customers, even before you have a product or service. Second part is a startup is not a smaller version of a big company. It requires different leadership management. It requires different strategies. Customer discovery and development is really important. And it's a search for a repeatable, sustainable business model. And what that means and what we teach our entrepreneurs is as a founder, you have a series of hypotheses about your business model, who your customers are, who your users are, how you're gonna reach them, who your key partners are, what your pricing is gonna be, and your job as a founder is to validate as quickly as possible whether the model is correct by seeing if your customers behave as your model predicts. And more likely than not, your customers will not behave how you predict. And so you continue to iterate on your business model. And then finally, approach this search in an iterative, iterative fashion, meaning, oh, uh, if you're going to fail, fail fast and experiment with a MVP, a minimum viable product. What is the smallest, most minimum viable product that you can create to get out to customers to test um, rather than building the whole entire, um, your grand vision? Again, this is like taking collective knowledge of entrepreneurship from a variety of sources. And the third and final tenant is learning entrepreneurship as business model innovation, which probably also sounds familiar to a lot of you, Companies are more frequently seen shifting from their, their focus from technological innovation toward business model innovation, because a good business model can even make an inferior technology more, um, more superior, more successful than a, a superior technology, excuse me. Business model innovation is designing a new or modifying the firm's extant activity system. And it's important for startups who wanna scale as well as for incumbents looking for new growth opportunities. And one of the one efficient option for business model innovation is to learn from existing solutions, something that's called business model patterns, which describe proven solutions to recurring problems during business model design. And over 90%, I think there's a slight delay here on my, my buttons, 90% uh, of all business model innovations are a recombination of existing business model patterns. If you're interested in business model patterns, um, there's a lot of research being done by uh, St. Gallen University. They have a whole database um, and some great research. If you just Google it, you'll come up with, you'll find all of the, the research and whatnot that they've been putting together. But there's a series of hundreds of, of patterns, including subscription model, freemium, um, pay as you go, um, white labeling, a lot of these probably sound familiar. And the one up on screen that I, that I wanted to just highlight really quickly to make this more tangible is razor and blades. This pattern describes uh, companies offering a cheap, 
basic product, which are like the razors, with complements that must frequently be replaced, which are the blades. And these complements are more heavily priced and therefore subsidizes that basic product. So this dates back to 1904 when Gillette moved to give the base product, the razor, away at a low price, earning money through the higher price consumables, which were the blades. And you see this um, business model pattern being adopted by a, a lot of companies, Nespresso, Keurig. The one I put here on screen is HP. You can get the core product, the, the printer for $75, not too bad, right? And then they get you <laughs> with ink, um, which is more expensive and it adds up quickly. The reason I emphasize these three tenets, um, teaching entrepreneurship as a process, as a business model search, and as business model innovation is because it underpins our curriculum and our programs, programs and it impacts how we develop our entrepreneurs. Specifically, Cal, uh, through the entrepreneurship education at Cal Lutheran, they offer an undergraduate minor in entrepreneurship, an MBA in enterprise innovation and entrepreneurship, which is um, what, I, what I got from Cal Lutheran, entrepreneurship club and a new venture competition. And again, something that's really important to this education is learning how to question assumptions, how to identify what our hypotheses are, what our assumptions are, and how to invalidate or validate them. There's some quotes here up on the screen. Um, these are some of our, our founders. The one on the left is just talking about the value of the entrepreneurship minor and his work with startups. And the one on the right, I think I said that right, one on the left. Then the one on the right, uh, this is Alexis Schomer, one of our Hub 101 founders talking about the value of co-working, of being around other entrepreneurs in that space, um, the value of the networking events and et cetera. I believe this is being recorded. So if you wanted to revisit this, you can. At Hub 101, we have a lot of student entrepreneurs. Um, Hub 101 membership is included in Cal Lutheran tuition for all students, not just entrepreneurship uh, emphasis. And we are also staffed by students and we call them doers. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the Atari gaming system founded by Nolan Bushnell. And he coined this phrase, the true entrepreneur is a doer, not a dreamer. So we adapted that and we call our doers, our student workers doers because they do everything around the space from our events, social media, uh, website development, um, events and more. And our goal for these doers is to tap into their passions and um, discover what their interests are by understanding what startup life is like. We also provide opportunities for students who want to jumpstart their professional, entrepreneurial, and profess per personal development through building connections, job and internship opportunities, discovering their inter interests and passions, and ultimately being part of a close-knit, supportive startup community. We believe that all startups need a variety of skills, which means that even if a student doesn't want to wear a CEO hat or a founder hat, they can still make an impact as a social media marketer or a market researcher or a developer or a variety of other roles. We further support these student entrepreneurs. I'm focusing a lot on the students right now, and then we'll kind of shift to like our community entrepreneurs um, through what we call the new venture competition. And this is a competition for students to promote their innovative student-led startups. It essentially serves as an idea lab where uh, student entrepreneurs learn how to use those foundational principles I was talking about to innovate and create value for customers. The top picture on the right is our last in-person event before COVID, that was in 2019. Um, the last two years we've held it virtually. And then the pictures on the bottom are just kind of to make more tangible what this event looks like. This event is open to the community. Um, I'm sure many of you have probably participated as mentors. You can come and walk around and talk to the teams and see what they're doing and vote for your favorites. We also have judges walking around to determine um, based on a, a variety of, of um, characteristics who, who gets certain prizes and you can see some of those winners in the bottom right. Aligned with our belief that an entrepreneurial mindset is so important, we also try to interact with entrepreneurs when they are young. We are we collaborate with Startup Kids, which teaches entrepreneurship in elementary schools and also at Oaks Christian School. Oaks Christian actually worked with the center at Cal Lutheran to develop a year-long entrepreneurship program for its high school students. And the really cool thing is that students who complete this program 
are eligible to receive course credit from Cal Lutheran if they chose to go to Cal Lutheran. A couple, um, I wanted to highlight a couple student entrepreneur teens to again kind of just highlight uh, the types of startup ideas that we are working with. So this is Adoptimal. It's a Tinder style platform that connects pets from various shelters with their future owners. I realize that, that those pictures are probably difficult to read. You may have to get your face really close to your device. Uh, Adoptimal participated in our new venture competition. They won best startup in their pool. They also won the judges best uh, choice overall. We really worked with them on their business model and customer development and also their prototype and MVP. The second startup I wanted to highlight here is InstaSmile. This is one of our executive MBA uh, teams. They provide state of the art production for clear dental aligners and their differentiator here is the ductile biocompatible resin that they've produced for direct printing. It eliminates the need for the production of positive molds and the thermo forming process. So this team participated in the new venture competition. They also won best startup in its pool. And um, we worked with them on business model and customer development specifically. And both of these companies that I just mentioned are seriously pursuing their startups uh, currently. Mo moving into kind of how we work with entrepreneurs beyond just our students. We also have developed a series of programs for entrepreneurs to bring their ideas to life and to build and scale their businesses, including education, resources, and mentorship. And we truly believe in an immersive education and a practical education, and especially through a period of intense focused uh, time period that provides founders the opportunity to learn at a rapid pace. These pictures on the right are again, just some pictures of, uh, of some of our programs, students and entrepreneurs within our programs. Going to just kind of pull out a few to, to talk about work elevation Academy used to be called. The freelancers Academy, and this is our uh, continual weekly incubator program for freelancers and small businesses specifically. So, less so much the innovation driven entrepreneur, but more so the small medium sized business entrepreneur. To share best practices, learn from each other, establish accountability, network and mentorship and create their great goals. Idea to do this is one of my favorite programs because I was involved in the development of this program. Um, odds are you've come up with a handful of startup ideas over the years and maybe even hundreds. And this program idea to do is the opportunity to turn those ideas into something, to do something with those ideas. There was an entrepreneur, uh, excuse me, an education major student at Cal Lutheran who was minoring in entrepreneurship. Her name was Jessica and she came to me. She came to have 101 and she said, I'm minoring in entrepreneurship and I have to do an internship in order to get my credits. And she's an education major. So we started talking and I was in the very early stages of developing this program. So we actually worked in tandem to create this, um, which ended up being really beneficial. We created a great program for entrepreneurs. The feedback has been amazing from, from the participants and the alumni. And also an example of learning by doing the student who was minoring in entrepreneurship got to meld together her major and her minor to create something of value for the community. So this is a cohort based three month program for accelerating startups. It includes instruction, mentorship, and a demo day. This is really for uh, startups who have a business idea and don't know where to start, or they have an early stage business idea, but they're stuck and they don't really know what to do next. Because this program takes an entrepreneur from idea through validation and development to launch or pivot. So at the end of the 12 weeks, um, you have a clear direction of what you should be doing. Going back to those tenants, those three tenants and kind of the, the methodology, this provides the entrepreneurship framework, connections for founders to find co-founders, resources to build a tech startup and work with mentors to accelerate growth. This model is designed to bring people together and provide them with the tools and support for entrepreneurial success. These are some pictures of, of the last demo day that we did at Hub 101. This is the final uh, event or excuse me, program that um, I'm gonna highlight. This is business barn raising. Does anyone know what that is? I can't see the Q&A, but a barn raising was common in the American frontier and communities would come together whenever a family would need to build a barn. They'd come together, the whole community. You were shunned if you didn't participate and they would put up a barn in, in the course of a couple of days. So we adapted this concept to a business barn raising 
And it's an eight week summer program for the community to collaborate, to solve business challenges, launch entrepreneurial ventures and gain practical experience. We developed this program because we saw needs for startups, established businesses and individuals that could be met by working together. So we applied the concept of coming together as that for that business barn raising um, to really focus on three parts of the ecosystem. The first are establishes or established organizations who submit challenges that they're facing and they get matched with a team to develop solutions. This could be anything, having an app that doesn't have enough engagement, um, having some customer service problems, having some internal operational problems. Then startups with their long to-do list and limited resources are assigned additional team members to drive their business forward. And then finally, individual participants submit their skills and their interests and they get assigned a project that they'll enjoy. This actually, this program came about because someone who participated in idea to do that 12 week program came to me and said, Kristen, it would be, it would be really cool after working on my, my startup for the last three months. If I, if there was a, a forum where I could have extra hands on deck to help me, you know, with the certain things I need to do, cause I don't have a co-founder yet. And also opportunity if there's local businesses who are experiencing a problem that I can solve to slot my startup right in. And this was specifically an HR um, platform. So we started talking and um, that's how this program was, was created. And our vision for this program is to focus on those three parts of the ecosystem to help everyone grow. Two program participants to highlight Sage Start um, is a zero waste subscription box offering carefully curated award-winning books for kids. So the idea here focused on sustainability is when you receive your subscription box and you're done reading those books, your children are done, you mail them back. Um, so the books get reused and we're not contributing to, um, to the landfill problem. The founder, Erin, has 25 families, families signed up to her subscription service. She participated in our new venture fair. Uh, she won Best Startup for Good. She's also participating in our business barn raising right now, and um, we're working with her. We have worked with her on her business model, customer development, and her, now her marketing strategy. The second one is a Medi Mixer. This is a gamification device designed to help children take medicine. This is the actual prototype here on the right. They participated, the founder, excuse me, Keith Katz participated in Idea to Do, where we focused on his business model and his fundraising strategy. And he benefited from mostly from our network connections and mentorship. Um, including the design agency who, who developed this prototype. We have over a, a hundred entrepreneurs have participated in our programs in the last year alone. I'm bringing back this goal slide, just because I mentioned earlier that entrepreneurship is more than just about startups. And five years ago, Hub 101 set out to develop an entrepreneurial ecosystem and a startup community. And Hub 101 has been a key force in building a startup community in the region. And we've accomplished this by applying a modified Boulder thesis. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the Boulder thesis, Brad Feld is an entrepreneur and venture capitalist and the author of this book here on the, on the screen, Startup Communities, which sets the foundation for how to create a vibrant startup community. What are the different components of a startup community? Um, and he lined, he outlined the Boulder thesis, and we have kind of modified that to adapt it to make it more relevant for our community. The first thing is leaders must start things, which is modeled by the amazing leaders we have in our community. It's a long-term commitment. We see the work that we're doing is more than just running a co-working space in an incubator. We create value for entrepreneurs and small businesses for years to come. And we also advise the city in regards to economic development. A startup community is all inclusive to anyone who wants to participate in it. Continuous engagement is essential um, to continually put on events and activities that engage the whole, the whole entrepreneurial community. Give first, which I'm going to get to again in a minute. And embracing weirdness and starting traditions. Um, we, the before, this was before my time, but the building, our building, her name is Sophie because someone just decided to name her one day. Uh, they, they have birthday cake for her every year and they blow out the candles. <laughs> um, we have the, all the artwork in our space is created by our doers, by our student workers. We have pizza Fridays and lunch and learn Thursdays. 
um, free co-working Fridays, started to create and develop these traditions that are unique and specific to Hub 101 in order to continue to cultivate this community. A big part of what we do at Hub 101 is, um, and how we develop entrepreneurs and the entrepreneurial ecosystem is through our events. And I should mention that the ecosystem I'm talking about includes all of you as well. Um, I, by community, I mean our extended community, which stretches beyond Ventura County, even across oceans. I'm gonna talk a minute about our international footprint and um, it's our events, our programs, and et cetera, are all open to, um, to all of you as well. On average, Hub 101 hosts eight to 10 events that attract 100 to 200 guests per month. COVID has obviously um, impacted this, although the majority of these events are already um, starting up again. And on the right hand side, these pictures, the top right is a pitch day, a demo day. The bottom right is a startup weekend and the bottom left is um, women's economic ventures, uh, women in tech. Going to highlight a few types of the events that we hold for, for our community. The first is the ESS, Entrepreneur Speaker Series, which is a monthly event where speakers share their entrepreneurial experiences, challenges, successes, and learnings. And at the beginning of every ESS, we open the floor to entrepreneurs to share what they're working on. And this always leads to useful and impactful connections. We've, um, we have an incredible community filled with individuals who are passionate, and enthusiastic about entrepreneurship and helping new businesses get their start. The types of speakers we've had at ESS are anywhere from tech entrepreneurs to franchise owners to artists and musicians. We've had a drummer, um, a variety of different types of entrepreneurs. Startup weekend and hackathons. These are accelerator microcosms. So participants collaborate to develop, in, to develop innovative solutions to various industry challenges over the course of multiple days. We produce two startup weekends a year in partnership with Techstars. And then we also hold regular hackathons. And these up on screen are some of the ones that we've held. Hacks for Health, and sponsored by the USDA. Hackathon by the Sea, sponsored by Ventura County Office of Education. Global Game Jams, Titan Hacks, Code DLA. These are some pictures of our, our hackathons on the top left. All of these are at Hub 101, except for the top left, which is a sports academy in Newberry Park. These events can be themed by industry, by uh, problem or need, by social impact, by location. And the objective of these three-day events or these multi-day events is to foster an environment where like-minded people and creators come together to create business ideas, to potentially meet co-founders and mentors and investors, um, to talk to customers and ultimately experience what startup life is like. Over the last five years, Hub 101 has led the creation of a robust environment for innovation entrepreneurship in the area, um, specifically Conejo Valley, which spans Ventura County and LA County. And it's an environment that not only supports entrepreneurs, but leads to the growth and retention of key stakeholders in the region. We're connected to a network of investment funds, financial institutions, design agencies, local colleges and universities, accelerators, co-working spaces, and nonprofits. We have an international footprint. We're connected to startup communities in Vienna, Paris, London, Barcelona, Scandinavia, and more. These are some pictures of um, top right is a Hacks for Health with the USDA. Bottom right is Weaves uh, Kathy O'Dell and a panel with her. The middle picture is Fathomworks. Fathomworks is a um, tech and innovation center um, local. They have uh, 60,000 square feet dedicated to their space. 20,000 of it is for testing, prototyping. They have 3D printers and all sorts of really cool equipment. And the other 40,000 is dedicated to events and, um, and demonstrations. And the picture on the bottom left is actually the Thousand Oaks Mall. We, one of our startup weekends we held in the Thousand Oaks Mall, the final pitch day event. It was before my time, but I heard that it was really fun and a lot of random people would stop to come and, you know, what's going on? What is this? What do you do? Who are you? And this is the type of, these are the type of activities that Hub 101 is known for and how we, again, cultivate the startup community is just getting out there. Um, and doing things in places that aren't necessarily just Hub 101, but are that are, that are within the community. 
We have a great relationship uh, with IEEE, Buena Ventura chapter specifically, um, who hosts their events at Hub 101. They provide mentorship and technical expertise to our startups, and they occasionally make gifts. Um, I saw Doug Asgard on, on, the, on, the, on the list of attendees. So hi, Doug, you and I are there on the bottom <laughs> with Mike Finesses and the Hub, the, excuse me, the coffee mugs that you donated. Um, again, the bottom picture on the bottom right is uh, an award ceremony. And then I'm not sure those other two events were again before my time, but some other events I found in our albums of IEEE. So far, IEEE, IEEE has um, gifted a foosball table, a podium, amenities like those coffee mugs, hundreds of them, um, a toaster oven, things that make our space more inviting and welcoming to entrepreneurs, which is really important. Again, these relationships are crucial to the development and growth of entrepreneurs. One of the final pieces to this whole puzzle um, and also crucial to our mission are community leaders and mentors. We have over 300 mentors in our network. Uh, these are people who show up and ask how they can get involved. How That includes a variety of things. Um, they provide mentorship, perspective, and the tools that entrepreneurs need in order to create and build sustainable startups. They hold office hours with, with entrepreneurs. They participate in our programs and our one-on-one -on -one mentor matching. They serve as judges for our startup events and our competitions. They make connections and networking, and they're happy and willing to do so. And again, these are just some pictures of some of our, our mentors. On the bottom is some judging, and then the top, the ones on the far right are just some, men, some mentor uh, exchanges. This is actually really the final piece of our, of our puzzle here, which is give first. Um, the final and most critical ingredient in a vibrant and resilient startup community is to give first. And what this means is when a community embodies a give first philosophy, each community member helps each other whenever they can without the expectation of receiving something in return. And what this does is it builds a really powerful network of caring people who are all flourishing and growing because they're all giving to each other. There's no need to wait until you're quote unquote successful to give first. Um, and anyone who wants to con contribute to the community can do so. The point and the value of give first is you give first, knowing that eventually the community is gonna return the favor, but when, how, and from where can't be predicted. Give first is a constant state of mind and there's no obligation. Again, these are people who show up to have 101 and they say, I wanna help, I wanna get involved. No expectations, just put me to work. An example, that, because I wanted to make this more tangible, what, what this means is we're having an acoustics problem at Hub 101. Um, exposed ceilings and the, the unfinished floor makes for some, some echoes. And I, we're, we're talking about this and someone in our community um, heard about it and so he came right over, he ran some acoustics tests, he came up, he helped us come up with some ideas for so solutions and he's even giving us some material from his home studio that he has left over when he was doing his, his studio. Again, just an example that's top of mind. This giving first can be mentoring, attending events, volunteering, giving advice, making connections to potential customers and investors. Something even as little or seemingly little as sending an encouraging email to a startup entrepreneur. There really are no bounds because give first again is a constant state of mind. So. I have spent quite a bit of time talking about how we develop entrepreneurs, the entrepreneurship methodology we teach, the community we build and foster, the mentors and community leaders who are integral to what we do and how community also includes all of you. And so I'm going to conclude with a few awesome stories of startups who have launched or grown from Hub 101. The first is Peer Spectrum. Um, it's a market research and insights platform that brings tech advances to the market research industry. The founder, Michael McCrary, stumbled literally into Hub 101 back in 2016 and was like, what is this place? He started as a coworker, so a co-working membership. He then outgrew that. He moved into one of our private offices when he had a couple employees. And now he has over 100 team members, uh, employees, excuse me, all around the world. He grew out of us, clearly, with 100 people, um, but he didn't want to move too far, so he's actually just right upstairs up from our building. They have raised recently 17 million Series B, and 
he has hired um, dozens of Cal Lutheran students and alum, not just as interns or early level employees, but also as senior level executives. And he has given back to Hub 101 monetarily. He has sponsored our, some of our ESS events and also our Pivot uh, magazine publication. Quick quote from Michael, crazy to think that a little over five years ago, I was co-working at Hub 101, happy that I wasn't getting charged rent for five months. And now here we are with 100 employees all around the world. I didn't realize back then what Hub 101 would become. I have a vision and a dream that Hub 101 will be the tech hub of SoCal. Baby Barista is a Nespresso-like machine that makes the perfect bottle in under 30 seconds. And it has an accompanying ecosystem um, that revolutionizes the infant formula feeding experience. Kara Armstrong, the founder, grew from Hub 101 through mainly through our network and connections, um, investors, mentors, and also the design agency who developed this prototype that you see on screen. Kara was also one of our ESS speakers. She was named a most fundable company last year. They're currently fundraising a seed round and also crowdfunding campaign on Fundify. And Kara says being connected to Cal Lutheran and Hub 101 and having access to the incredible resources offered is such a gift. Pray.com, I only have, this is second to last. Pray.com is a faith-based app that prov provides daily prayer, inspirational audio content and a private social network. The founder, well, there's actually four founders, Matt, Matt, excuse me, Matt Potter, Mike Lynn, Steve Gatena, and Ryan Beck. Steve Gatena was the first one at Hub 101. He wasn't working on anything specific. He had just left his previous project. He was in a transition stage, didn't know what he was going to do. He had an idea for this digital destination for faith, but he was still thinking about it and researching, sifting through data. And he met his three co-founders at Hub 101, including his technical co-founder, Ryan Beck, who, um, developed the, especially the beginnings of all of this. So ideated, they actually participated in one of our early incubators and grew out of that. Their co-founders met. They're one of the top grossing apps in the Apple App Store and they closed 14 million series A in 2018. Steve Gatena says, I'm grateful for the space Hub 101 has provided for local entrepreneurs. The encouragement their team offers and the connections the Calvin staff has made. If it wasn't for Hub 101 being there and being so welcoming, the four of us could have never gone together. Final one is Whistle. Whistle is a hospitality guest messaging software that unites all touch points and communication between guests and staff. The founder, Chris Hovanessian, again, grew out of Hub 101. He still is a coworker. Um, he's had mentorship um, and connections to investors and also talent. He's raised, excuse me, he has hired employees and interns from, from our, our network connections. Whistle is in about 800 hotels in the US and Canada. They've been named best guest messaging software four years in a row by Hotel Tech Awards. And Chris Ovenessian says, the best thing about Hub 101 is these connections that you make. There seems to be this unnatural want to help each other. Without even asking, people will put you in touch with others and I haven't seen anything like it anywhere else. I wanted to end on this one because it really drives home that give first mentality that I, that I was talking about. Final three points. There's no magic bullet for entrepreneurship and it can be a messy process, which is why our communities give first mentality plays such an important role in the development of our of successful entrepreneurs. And then finally, the methodology that I was talking about um, and those tenets, having that structure, in addition to a place to start physically and metaphorically, access to education, resources, and mentorship help provide direction, otherwise very ambiguous environment. The um the purpose of me coming here today and talking to all of you is also to share that, and I know a lot of you are involved in a variety of ways, um, how to get involved in Hub 101. I can stop sharing my screen here. And um, that includes mentorship. Again, I gave some examples on one of those slides, which can be making connections, or perhaps someone needs uh, technical advising, uh, perhaps someone needs mentorship, office hours, or a variety of a variety of needs, um, investment or connections to investors. These are ways that you can get involved if you um, are so inclined to do so. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and are there any questions? That's what I'm supposed to ask. Opening up the floor. There we go. Any questions? <laughs> Opening up the floor for questions. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'll let folks. Uh, 
find the Q&A box. It usually takes them a moment. Uh, while, while they're doing that, I've got one, I, yes. or maybe two. Um, so you mentioned startup kits. This is just kind of a random thought. Another uh, organization we've occasionally dealt with is at uh, Rancho Campana High School in Camarillo. They have something called RC Makes. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Dave Gross. It. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Everybody knows Dave Gross. <laughs> yes. Um, we, yeah, we definitely support RC Makes, um, and they're doing a lot of really cool stuff too. There, we're, I guess, I suppose we're not as involved as we are Startup Kids or Oaks Christian. But yes, another really great organization that is part of that community building, that ecosystem part. That component and Dave Gross is great. He donated um, a good, a good. He gave us a, a large sum of money for our for our new venture fair a couple of years ago that we're still trying to get through. Well, that's great. Um, so I got I got another uh, question uh, about the the new venture competition. Uh, so that's open to college students. What who is who is the the target audience there? Yes, the new venture competition is for students. However. We what we like to do because it's it's every year and it's every May. So if you know a competition is coming in May, you can start working on your idea ahead of time, right? And so mm -hmm. we like to match people up with mentors to start, you know, brainstorming, being a sounding board. Um, and so people in the community get involved earlier on as mentors. Um, and also on the day, we have judges who again critique the startup on a variety of, of criteria to determine the winners of various prizes. Students from other Universities can participate as well, and then we also have Oaks Christian students who participate every year too. And usually the startup kids, they come up with some really cute ideas as seven and eight year olds. So, oh wow, okay, great. Um, let's see. Uh, don't see any questions yet. A uh, comment from from Doug. He um. We typed this in a little early, but uh, th thank you for the the acknowledging the foosball table and the in the podium for my triple E. <laughs> of course, <laughs> we you know we had to have that we had to stow away the foosball table for last year because of COVID and you know it's, can't have any high touch areas, um, but it is oh, back yeah. out. So oh good good yeah so good. it was it's one of those things where um, because we we've gotten to have hold some uh, events including some large events in the in the common area um uh without you charging us we 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 feel that the, the the at least we can do is provide some value in other ways so that was that's that was really nice you've done more so actually i see doug's question uh describe how hub 101's connection to foundations etc support actual funding to local startups it's a good question um this really depends. We are we have we are launching a, a more formalized process for this. So we are launching a platform um, that is going to bring together our mentors and investors and also our students and entrepreneurs in a way that is better than Mike and I um, going in our brains and saying, okay, you need you need help with blockchain or marketing. There so, so and so has that experience, right? And so it's a it's a better way to match these individuals together to provide value. Right now, it's more informal. So if someone, uh, my, Mike Panessis is an angel investor. We're tied to a lot of um, angel investment groups, Tech Coast Angels, Santa Barbara Angels, like I mentioned. Um, we're also part of SoCal Alliance Venture Pipeline. So we submit startups to that, and they get basically essentially passed through to the venture, the VCs that are within that organization. Um, and it depends on the startups. We also have a lot of, and I didn't really touch on this, there's kind of two parts to entrepreneurship, two sides of entrepreneurship. There's small, medium, size entrepreneurs and there's innovation driven entrepreneurs small medium businesses are like the the ones that you could go to a bank and get a loan for right gyms mom pop shops clothing companies and the innovation driven are like amazon's facebook's the ones that are more unknown we have a lot of small business um, ideas especially coming from the university we have car detailing um there's a cleaning business that came through and so the way the startups that come to us are looking for and have different options of funding right so perhaps someone comes and they want to start a crowdfunding campaign we can absolutely help them with that and point them in the right direction we have we're tied to several crowdfunding organizations republic um and the other one is escaping me at the moment of course so it, it depends on, on on the startup and how they come to us and what their need is and we so we have a variety of avenues that we tap into doug i hope that answered your question now one thing uh kristen you mentioned earlier 
uh, but uh, some of the uh, community is developing a whole different concept that you've now incorporated from companies. How is that working? Sorry, can you repeat that one more time? I was I at the beginning of that I was reading something in the chat in the Q and A. Oh, okay. It was a better question. No, 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 no. no. I, I just I thought so I could multitask mentioned... and I can't. I apologize. That's okay. You mentioned earlier when we were talking before we even started the program here that uh, you have a new effort underway that are working with companies and they're sending their people in. Yeah. How's that work? So, um, COVID has shifted the, uh, the model of co-working. Uh, so prior to COVID, we did have some companies who were our customers, meaning uh, they would pay for their employees to have a, a, a membership at Hub 101 so they could get out of their home office and get out of their actual office. After COVID, or amidst COVID, we're seeing a lot more of that. So a lot more companies coming in and saying, hey, we want to pay for X amount of desks in your space, not desks, for our employees to get out of their house 10 hours a week or three days a week or whatever that looks like. So it's been very interesting to, to see. And we do have a couple plans to accommodate those needs. So we have a part-time plan if you really do only want to get out of your home office two days a week. And then we have our full-time plan, which is the normal, you know, 40 hours or plus a week. So yes, the model of that's great. Really shifting. Okay. Um, so I, I can go ahead and, and read the questions uh, if, if you'd like. So, that, that, sure. uh, so uh, is the Calism Entrepreneur Program full time or extension classes? I am not as involved in that as Mike Panessis, so I'll have to get back to you. I believe it is full time because it's the it's the undergraduate, the minors for the undergraduate program. Um, the MBA is an MBA, so again, a uh, full time, or I guess you could take it at your leisure. I don't know if they have, they do actually, they do have an entrepreneurship certificate. Who is this who asked that question? That was uh, uh, Larry. Larry Ring, I'll have to follow up um, with you on that because they do have a certification. I just don't, I'm not as familiar with it. So I will get back to you. I will write that down. All right, well, Larry has another question. So this is good. Uh, should we contact Kristen if we're available to be, to be mentors? Yes, absolutely. Um, I can put, my, can I put my email in the chat? Um, I, uh, the, I can send it out to the attendees. Okay, great. If you'd like. That'd be, yeah. Okay, that's, that'd be simplest. Larry and Frank, it looks like, had a similar question. They did. Um, how do you start and how do you get involved? You just reach out and that, say those first words. <laughs> and then um, I, I have a form to, to have you fill out that kind of asks for your, your areas of expertise and the industries that you um prefer to give feedback in or within and then um we will match you with with student entrepreneurs entrepreneurs um that's how it's working right now again this platform which hopefully we're launching in the next month will be a more formal process and that you can go onto this platform on our website and you create your profile and you say these you check the boxes of your areas of expertise maybe that's cryptocurrency blockchain and smart contracts um and then any anytime someone comes onto the platform and has a question that is aligned with those those subjects, you will get a message and you can decide whether or not you want to respond to that message. So it's, it'll be a lot easier, um, more seamless experience for both our mentors and our entrepreneurs. At the moment, yes, email me and I will I will onboard you. Okay. Um, I don't see any other questions. Happy to give it a minute or two if somebody's uh, madly typing. And Larry yeah. Ring, would will you be able to put me in touch with Larry after? I will. Okay, great. Well, if we don't have any questions, let's just say that uh, Kristen, unbelievably wonderful. That was one of the best presentations I've ever seen, oh, and wow. I really appreciate it. Well, that's. That's a tall order. Thank you. There, there's well, a lot of the truth. It yeah, really a, was. A lot of stuff going on at Humboldt and One. It's just. Uh, I you, remember so back. Yes. I remember back in 2014. Wow. What? <laughs> that's a different world. <laughs> yeah. Now. I should have mentioned I've only been to Hub 101 since 2019. So a lot of the stuff prior to that I, I, I'm familiar with, don't know as much about. Um, but I do remember, yeah. I do know that the, the early days were. Chaotic, really. I mean, they outsourced Hub 101 to uh, to another company, and after a year, it was 
terribly mismanaged and a nightmare. And so they decided, hey, we're going to take this ourselves and and call it Hub 101 and run it ourselves. So it's been an yes. entrepreneurial journey even of itself. Yeah, I remember those early days. It was a different world for sure. And you've really, uh, you've made it really created an empire here that's wonderful and i need uh, we need to advertise it more to the community so they really know absolutely so. yeah we just launched a new website uh, hub101.org it has all mm. of our I probably should have had a slide with that didn't think about it um hub101.org it has all of our programs um an events calendar which is revamping up and the spaces and how you can use the spaces and um, yeah, you feel free to check that out. We're gonna, we have students working on creating a virtual tour so that you can actually see what the inside of space looks like. So we have some exciting things coming up. So yeah, love, love being able to share that. Well, Ken, thank you enough for all this. Really appreciate it. You wanna go ahead and close it out then? All okay. right, yeah, th thank you everybody. And um, I'll send a link to the recording and uh, Kristen's email to those those folks who attended tonight. Um, and thank you. Oh, I didn't know you were part of IEEE. Um, well, uh, there's, sorry, that was probably totally out of context. There's, there's a message in the, in the chat from someone who came into IEEE, Turaj. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. Hi, Turaj. Great, great to see you. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. All right. All right. We're everywhere. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Oh, it was All our right. pleasure. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.